All righty, and welcome back. I have partnered with DR Power again to show you another mower. And we're not talking about this one. This is the one we showed last time. This is the SP30 residential, yet commercial, uh, finished mower. But today, or yesterday, this one came. I just wanted to quickly show the way they come. This is the field and brush mower. Much more heavy duty. I just wanted to explain, because remember, this one came in a really big box. But this one's so big that it has to come in a crate. Comes by a separate carrier, not FedEx or UPS. And so uh, just be aware if you order something like this, you've got to be home when it's delivered and schedule the delivery and so on. And be aware that uh, it's gonna be this big. So what is it? It's the field and brush mower. It's one of them, they have several. I just wanted to quickly show the way it looks because it looks really cool in the crate that it arrives in. That's the way they pack it. The deck is separate. I'll explain that in a moment, but it attaches right on there as you can imagine. And that's just the quickest look at the way it came. Let's get it out of the crate and get it set up so that I can explain, explain the uh, differences. Okay, I'm sure you can see how this is gonna work. You basically just have two pieces. You have your power unit, and you have your attachment. The attachment that ships with it is the brush cutting deck. So what you have here, you have this big shaft stick sticking out. And that shaft, you take this off, you take the pin out of here, you pull this retainer off, and then you stick that through here. Then you put the retainer back on and you put the pin on. And then all you have to do is wrap that belt around that blade clutch and that is it and then it all and so then yeah well i'll show you in one second Okay, so as for slipping the belt around the blade clutch under there, it uh, doesn't quite reach, so you have to make a little more, more room. If you look at this idler here, you got that square on the arm, and that is for a ratchet. You're supposed to slip that in there, and then you can release the tension on that idler, and that'll give you the slack that you need to slip the belt over the blade clutch pulley and so uh, that's what I'm going to do next and uh, that's how you do that okay and there we go so the pivot mount is locked in and the belt is on its clutch and so it is put together something I'm realizing is that now I've got to remember to take the uh, tape off the blade and look at the blade uh, let's look at the blade in a second when I get the tape off of it alrighty so at this point well let me look at the blade first since that's what I just said okay we've got a single 26 inch blade and it is nice and thick now surprisingly this isn't the thickest one they make for it they got one called a heavy-duty blade and this is uh, the regular blade. Um, I don't think I'm going to end up bending this one, but if you had some really super serious application, you can buy the heavy duty blade, which is even much thicker than this for more impact. And uh, here's a good look at the spindle. They're talking about oversized bearings and a really thick wall so that when things are bouncing around in there, they're not going to crack that spindle. Super heavy duty. All right, super thick deck. 
And here's where I wanted to explain why it's got a mount like that. See if I raise up on just one side of the deck, it tilts so that you can, it will follow the contours of the terrain you're in, you're mowing in. And you'll see that when it's in action, that it will be able to uh, follow the terrain of the land. Okay, and so there's a look at them side by side. Now, believe it or not, it's kind of an optical illusion, but this one actually has a wider cut. This is a 30-inch cut, and this giant thing only has a 26-inch cut, but it's a much more powerful 26-inch cut, of course. Now, why would you need a different mower for a different, different application? This one being a finished mower, meaning for maintaining grass, it's got two blades, and it is uh, far less capable, although it's pretty capable, of um, mowing down really, really thick grass or saplings or uh, young trees and uh, palmettos and things like that. You wouldn't want to take this mower in there. So this is for regular upkeep and for the parts of your property that you haven't mowed in a year or two years or three years, you would want to use this one because it's made for it. If you try to do that with a regular mower, you're going to break it. And this one, oh, I don't, harder to break. I don't think it's unbreakable, but much harder to break. And we will certainly put it through its paces today. Now, the reason why its deck was separate is because it receives a number of different attachments. And I'll show you all that on the website here in just a moment. And that is where we're going now. Because the amazing thing that I wanted to say about it is this giant thing is actually the smallest one they sell. So let's go look at that website now and I'll see you over there. Okay, so here we are at the website and I've got all the brush cutter mowers pulled up and actually I was wrong. There is one model um, a little bit smaller. This is the one that they sent me. This is the 26 inch Pro with a swiveling deck, but there is one below it that has a fixed deck and as you can see there are smaller tires. And so that is the smallest one, 26 inch, 10 and a half horsepower fixed deck. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. And this is the one they sent me. And uh, let me click on that to show you why it has a swiveling deck and why the deck attaches that way. So here's that and we'll just pan on down to here. And this is why. You see, so there is the brush cutting deck that it came with, and it attaches onto that shaft. But you also have an option of these other attachments that you can buy, that as you can see will attach right onto the same swivel point. You have a chipper, a snow thrower, a grater, and a 42 inch finish deck, which looks like it has two blades on it and so you can run it as a regular type lawnmower if you want. Just wanted to show that quickly and let's go back to the list. So there we go. So there's the smallest one and there's this one but okay so here's where it gets different. So this is a 26 inch with a 10 and a half horsepower engine but if you come up to this one, the next size up, it's the same one but with a 14 and a half horsepower engine. And then you scroll up, they get bigger and bigger. Now we're into a 30 inch. It comes with a 16 and a half and just a wider cut, a little bit more power to handle that wider cut. And then here we go, we're getting starting to get serious here. This is the 30 inch but it has a 22, in, two, 22 horsepower engine. Uh, two cylinder Briggs V-twin. 
and uh, there we go but they keep going so here we go we're getting into a larger deck here this is a 34 inch it comes with a 22 horsepower and then the next one up you're starting to get into their new series of their commercial brush cutters and the big difference here is it comes with a Honda engine and the hydrostatic drive hard to explain if you don't know what that is basically it's hydraulic and there's like an effortless there's not different speeds there's just different the more you press down the handle the faster you go and then you also have a uh, effortless you don't shift into reverse you just um, probably squeeze it all the way and you start going backwards maybe there's an, another top lever not sure but I've, all my other equipment is hydrostatic and this would be the smoothest operation by far and so if you want the hydrostatic drives they do have them in their commercial series so that's the 26 inch commercial but then they also have their top of the line 30 inch 18 and a half horsepower Kawasaki hydrostatic drive and that has got to be just fantastic anyway so that is the quick overview of all the models and now I think it's time to go mow I just want to take a quick look at the controls on top of the mower and then we'll go do that Okay, so we'll just quickly go through the controls here before we go out from left to right. So this one here is the operator presence switch. That's the safety switch. So that like when the blades are engaged, you're holding on to that. And if you were to let go, the whole mower shuts off if the blades are engaged. And so that is important for safety. Over here is the key and it's set up for a starter that is not used on this one. But you basically just turn the key on. This this thing here, this is the this engages the blades. Pull up to engage. Push down to disengage. That's an electromagnetic clutch under there that uh, grabs a hold of that belt and engages the blades. So here are the speeds. Well, there's the throttle, slow and fast, and then there are the speeds. Now, you don't have to, this is the um, propulsion engagement. You press that down to make it go if it's in gear. Now, you don't have to disengage that to change gears. It will shift on the fly. But you've got uh, very, so one is a very slow crawl speed. That's probably what you'll be seeing me mostly use. And really handy, it's got a reverse. Very important with something that weighs this much. And that is basically it. So we will take it out onto the uh, power trails and give it a run.
Okay, so that was quite amazing. This was the first run with it, and I want to just, I mean, I know it's made for it, but I just want to see. Yeah, the blade is completely fine. Still straight. Now, I don't think I've ever mowed through anything like that with any mower. I have a kind of a confidence that this is made for it, and so you kind of go for it. And it kind of did. And as you can see, it took down... I even uh, I mowed down some things that were thicker than two inches, I think. I think it was supposed to be a maximum of two inches. And, you know, if you go slow, you can just kind of do it. These clusters of oak trees were... Uh, a bit of a challenge as you can see the uh, ground is very uneven and there's a lot of sand and dirt and stuff and that was really the only hang up the uh, the reason why it was getting caught or uh, stuck but you know you have a reverse on it you just do reverse you tilt it up you wiggle it around wow look at this over here that was that cluster. Tell you what, I am extremely impressed. And I gotta mention again, this is the smallest one. So if you have applications that are worse than what I've uh, encountered out here, they make bigger ones. Head on over to the uh, DR website. And uh, I'll have the uh, link in the description and the top pin comment and uh, go and get you one. You know, this is the type of thing where I just uh, keep mowing just for free all day because, man. Anyway, that wraps it up. Thank you for watching. Thank you, DR. And uh, till the next time, have a good day.